Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about classes in C++. So in our last video, we looked at the basics of structs, and we use these to define our own types. Now, one of the things that I mentioned in the last video was that structs and classes are pretty much identical. Now, the way that they differ is with their uh, default access specifier, which basically dictates who can access the members of, say, a class or a struct. So what we're going to be looking at today is kind of the basics of how we write classes, as well as learning a little bit more about these access specifiers. So let's go ahead and get started, and we'll open up a new example called classes.cpp. And inside of here, we can start off with just creating, um, or rather, uh, including IO stream this header so we can do some printing and we'll go ahead and write a main function here core of our C++ programs. Now what we're going to be implementing as a class is the same or is the struct that we looked at last time. So we said that we you know maybe we're working with um, some plotting or some graphing so we might want a type that represents say a coordinate or a point uh, so some XY coordinate. So let's go ahead and create a class called point right with open and close curly brackets here so we've defined a class in much the same way that we defined our struct here we just really swapped the keywords now inside of this class we can specify uh, data members you can also specify member functions so we're tying together again um, our data and our methods that work with that data so here we can add say a coordinate x and some coordinate y so just two integers and then we can recreate our print method um, or member function um, from our struct. So that was just a simple uh, print function with a void return type. And inside of here, we just did std c out and printed out x is equal to the value of x followed by a new line character. And then we did the exact same thing uh, for y, right? So we printed out x and y. Okay, so how exactly do we use a class? So we can use a class in much the same way as we used our struct. So we can use our class Right, to create a variable um, with the type, say, point here. So here I can create an instance of this class, so an object, so some point, and then we'll just call this, say, p1 here. Right, so I've created an instance of my class called p1. Now, the main difference between a struct and a class is how we can access the members of that uh, structure class by default. So that gets into these access specifiers that we have in C++. So in our last video, right, we said we could just change, you know, say the value of X and Y using our member access operator. So I could do something like P1.X is equal to 10. However, this isn't going to work by default with her class. So if I go ahead and try to save this, you can see one of my plugins is already yelling at me saying that there's a problem. And if I try to just compile classes.cpp, you can see it gives me the same error here. It says that this uh, integer um, X coming from this point class is private within this context. And it shows me where I'm trying to access this mem member of this point class and also where that integer X is defined within our point class. And it says, note, declared private here. So on line four of my file. But what exactly does this mean, right? And how does this differ from, say, a struct? So over here on the access specifiers, we can see that there's three main uh, specifiers here. There's this public one, this protected one, and this private one. Now we're not going to get in protected today. That's mainly relevant when we start talking about inheritance. So we're going to focus on public and private. So by default with a struct, the access specifier for all the members inside of our struct, so our data members and our member functions, is public. And by default for our classes, um, our access specifier for all of our members, so both our data members and our member functions, is private. And what that basically means is that we cannot access members of this class from outside this class. So for example, my print uh, member function that is a member of this class point can access X and Y, right? Because it's a member of class point. However, I can't just use this member access operator outside of this class. So I can't directly access, say, um, this integer x or this integer y or even this member uh, function print. I can't call those from outside the class here. 
And this is largely uh, just a way that we can design, say, our classes and our structs. So sometimes we want to prevent people from being able to access maybe the data of a class or the data of a struct. And we want to force them to go through, say, some set interfaces, right? So we can use access specifiers to accomplish this. And by default, um, our access specifier for our classes is private and for our uh, structs, it's public. So with a public access specifier, that really just means that anyone can access these members. So they can be accessed from within the class or struct or outside the class or struct. Now we can change the um, access specifier for a class or for a struct by marking this public or private or protected within this class or struct. So for example, I could go ahead and above uh, these data members and member functions, I could specify all of these things to be public. So this public access specifier. And now I can access X or Y or this print method from outside of the class here. So for example, I can change p1.x equal to 10. I can change p1.y is equal to 20. And I can call p1.print here, right? And all of this work will work 100% um, correctly here because now everything is public in here. We basically just turned our class into a struct by making everything public. So let's go ahead and compile this. So we'll go ahead and compile classes.cpp, create an output executable called classes. There's our executable and we can go ahead and run it. And you can see we get our expected printout of x is equal to 10, y is equal to 20. Now, we often actually use this public or private, say, within our classes or our structs. So these access specifier keywords can be used both within uh, structs or classes. But one of the ways that we often use them is we protect, say, our data members here. So for example, if we don't want you know, users to be able to directly access X or Y, and we want them to go through a set interface, we might leave our data members as private and just say some of our member functions as public, right? And then instead of directly being able to set X and Y, we might implement what are known, uh, these things that are known as setters or getters or and getters. So setters and getters are just interfaces for say setting or interacting with um, or getting um, say our data members. So for example, we can create a simple function here called you know, set X, Y that takes some integer, we'll call it new X and another integer called new y. And we'll use this to set, you know, x is equal to new x, and then y is equal to new y, right? So we're setting our data members x and y equal to uh, two values that we're passing in here from this method, new x and new y. So down here, instead of directly accessing, say, p1.x and p1.y, I can go through this new setter function, right? So I can just call say p, p1 dot set x, y and pass in say 10 and 20 here, right? So I've created a setter function that sets some values um, of these data members. So let's go ahead and save this and we can go ahead and compile classes.cpp and we get a rather unexciting or you know expected result here. We see x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 20. Now, in this case, it's you know, pretty trivial to, you know, just implement a setter that just directly copies, um, you know, whatever these values are and sets our data members to these values. But there are cases where it might make sense uh, to have, say, a setter function or a getter function. So, for example, inside of your set function, you might want to do some checks about these new values. So you want to, you might want to make sure that these new values fall within some expected range, right? Or perform some verification that the inputs are valid. So instead of allowing people to just directly access these data members, you might want them to go through some set interface that will perform these checks for them. So that's you know, one reason why you might say protect, say, your data members um, and only expose, say, some set interface like a setter or a getter. A getter would just be something you know, almost equivalent, but instead of setting, say, your data members, it returns them to, say, uh, the user, right? And you might perform some checks there as well. Okay, 
So that's going to go ahead and do it for today. That's kind of the basics of implementing, say, these classes, as well as the basics of these access specifiers. So we can specify, you know, whether we want a, you know, a data member or member function to be public or private, or even this protected that we'll get into in later videos when we start talking about inheritance. Now, as always, um, you can find this or any of my examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. And I'll go ahead and link down these two um, CPP reference pages um, below the video. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.